Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Hendo's Hot Topics. Hope you're having a good week. Hope you're looking after yourself and I hope you're loving yourself. Now, today we have Karen Berger. How's it going? Great. Having a great old time. Had a good week of training so far, so I get to enjoy the weekend now. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I saw that you're you're already into pre, pre-season training. So is there, is there really any real break or is it straight into it? Well, technically we do get like an off season, depends on whether you're part of the international series, um, series is or not. Yep. Um, but we do have a little bit of a break. We also do know you always have to come back into stuff. So you just need to try and stay fit to the best of your ability. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to train, it's just going to be so much harder when you do kick in again. So it's really up to you. And I saw the training you were doing. It, it wasn't what I was expecting for <laughs> netball. It looked like you're more training for the, the no. New Zealand Air Force or Army <laughs> or something like that. That's the fun part of preseason usually because in season we spend so much time on court and indoors. In the preseason we try to just do something different and get outdoors and um, a lot of team building stuff because a lot of teams will have new faces in and around. So we need to get to know um, each other a little bit better and what better way than to be in that hurt box and <laughs> getting into some dark places together. So yeah, it's the fun stuff. It's really hard, but it really helps with team building. Yeah, love that. Now. I want to I want to talk about you later on, but at the moment I want to focus on what's going on now. So recently, so during this year, you had a you had a bit of a a halt to your season and and your sport with your injury. And I don't I don't want to focus on that too much. But what I'd really love to ask is what I'm inter- interested in is how did you keep that motivation and and kept such a positive mindset just to keep ticking over every day and and just get that rehab done. Yeah, um, this is probably my first big injury that took me out of the sport for such a long time. So it was a new learning curve for me as well. And I had to figure out how to do that myself. I had my first few days of sulking about it. And then, you know, you just have to get on with it. You've got a job to do. Um, And I think I set my mind into trying to figure out life outside a netball and enjoying my life outside. Um, You never know when this big break's going to come again as much as you don't want it. It was quite nice to actually go. I got to go home for a bit, got to see my family for the first time in about two or three years. So that was a very big silver lining. Um, And then just little things throughout your netball career, you always have little niggles going on. So you actually have that time now to figure out all that kind of stuff and studies and work opportunities and things like that. So I just set my mind into the off court kind of things and making sure I'm ticking along and keeping my body nice and active. And yeah, it's been actually quite nice, to be honest. I feel ready to get back into things now. Would you say it was almost like a blessing in disguise? It gave you time just to reground again? Um, I mean, if I could change it, I would. I would have loved yeah. to have kept playing, especially with it having been com games. Um, I would have wanted to be a part of that. Um, but if it had to happen, uh, yes, it did have its positives and it did have yeah. its silver linings. And I learned quite a bit about myself as well. So, um, yeah, it had its positives, but I obviously would have preferred it to not have yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Now. You moved over from Western Cape and South Australia, oh, South Australia, sorry, South Africa when you're yeah. 18, right? 18, that's quite a big decision for a young adult. So how how did that kind of hit you? Yeah, people quite say that um, to me all the time. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. how did you as an 18-year-old? Why did you move like across the yeah. world? But, you know, when there's quite a lot of kids that do OEs these days, um, mm. and that was my mentality as well. It wasn't going to be a permanent move necessarily at the start. Yeah. It was just to come over to New Zealand, have a gap year, enjoy my netball a little bit. And then one year was so enjoyable and I started liking the netball and the environment here. And I started building my own little community around myself that, yeah, one year turned into 11 and (laughs) I'm still here. So, um, yeah, at that time, it wasn't a big decision. It was like, I just wanted to go do something fun. Um, And ultimately, as the years went by, I started realizing, oh, my gosh, this is where I'd actually like to settle one day. So later on, that big decision came. (laughs) Yeah. Now, you did say in in a previous interview that you it wasn't long before you felt that I'm a Kiwi now, that I'm actually a Kiwi. And, and with next year with the World Cup being back in South Africa, you know, mm. and you, you've been a Silver Fern player and it's, what do you feel the emotions with that? You know, going back to your your home country and, and 
playing for New Zealand now and and what's what's going on in your head with that yeah um people always ask me like how it feels playing against my home yeah, country yeah, yeah. Wow. um I find it quite exciting um I don't know the players personally yeah. that I come up against because I didn't play with them back in when I was there so I don't have that personal connection um but for me in terms of playing in South Africa next year uh, I grew up in a very big sporting family and so mm. my family was always on the sidelines wherever I went and whatever I did um, and so moving to New Zealand there was this sudden like I didn't have that anymore and so I was quite reliant on myself and having to encourage myself um, yeah, yeah. so having that opportunity to actually be able to play in front of my family and friends and being able to hear their voices I think that's the thing that I look forward to the most. <laughs> and usually when you see uh when you see world cups or that sort of thing you see teams that would be quite nervous going into different countries but for you i guess it would be the opposite almost be a, a calming you know you, you might even be more more focused than usual because it, it's a sense of uh, calmness yeah, yeah yeah i think it's it's i'm going to an environment that i've been in like for years before and um yeah it's nothing new <laughs> so apart from it being a world cup obviously um I think just the environment in itself and me knowing what's going on and and I think a lot of people can be quite stressed out about the fact that it's South Africa but Cape yep. Town is so lovely like that's where I always go and I go home um and it's so inviting uh very big like I love going visiting there so and doing all the touristy things so yeah. just knowing that I'm back where I have been before and I enjoy it so much. It's really exciting. Now, here's a here's a question that you may have not thought about or been asked before, but <laughs> if it wasn't for the career, the career path you've taken now with netball, have you ever thought about which, which other direction you would have gone or something else you would have liked to do? Yeah, I think I spoke, we just went on our um, pre-season camp and you know as yeah. we do our skills have a chat in the car on the drive <laughs> um and we talked about this kind of stuff too and I think for me if I didn't come to New Zealand I probably would have stayed in South Africa if I didn't follow the the netball side of things I probably yeah. would have stayed in South Africa and I was quite keen to study physiotherapy um and because I like um being successful in life and I know how hard it is it is extremely hard to be a professional netballer in South Africa and have a career outside of it mm -hmm. so for me personally like it's sad to say but I probably wouldn't have played netball to be honest yeah. and I would have gone down the physiotherapy route um and just you know had a good successful professional career in that area so um but I mean that that was my thinking back then I was 18 years old and things can change like what I think now about what I want to do in my life going forward and what I would have done when I was 18 is completely different I would not study physiotherapy right now I get way too much to do with them I see what they do on a daily basis and that's not for me anymore um so yeah things change yeah that is interesting I've never thought about it in that way of how easy things can change even in a 24 hour kind of time frame you know yeah. one day you, you could want to go uh, you know go on a, a random excursion across the country around <laughs> the world and go spend yeah. thousands of dollars at shops and then the next day you go actually i, I think i might spend the next year yeah. going to the beach every day and reading or doing something that you yeah. don't think well, you want to like, do because you create this preconceived idea about what a profession or like a certain area or a job would be like yeah. and unless you've actually had that personal experience with them because we always get told like go do some stuff like experience the job a little bit see what you're going what's going to get be involved in being in that job and I think that can change your mind quite drastically and quite yeah. quickly about whether you want to go down that route or not so that's been my my experience anyway <laughs> so is it hard to adjust to uh, you know the so-called limelight or is it more when it comes and goes you have waves of anxiousness and or oh, you know i actually forgot i was i was on such a big platform that that sort of thinking um yeah i think for me personally i don't um i play the sport because i enjoy it and i want to yeah, challenge myself awesome. in a physical aspect so the limelight side of it is um both a blessing and a curse at the same time 
um, blessing in terms of all the opportunities that you can get out of it. Um, and you can really utilize that quite well, yep. um, but also curse and all the pressure that comes with that side of things. And so it's really important for me to switch off from that side of things yep. um, and try and not read into the media and what they say and what they do and what people expect of you either. Um, mm. And just try and be myself because if I'm true to myself and I do what I believe in and I'm the best version of myself, it shouldn't really matter what other people yeah. say if there's any issues or problems I'm pretty sure my family and friends who I trust will tell me um and that's the only opinions that matter to me how do you switch off how do you switch off from that sort of stuff um I try not to um uh read stuff <laughs> about what yeah, people yeah. say I yeah. think that's the biggest thing because you can get sucked into wanting to know and People can say, and I've heard this so many times, a hundred great things about you, but the two people that say something bad about you, that's what you remember. Mm -hmm. And so as good as it is to read all the good stuff that people say about you, it is the bad stuff that stick with you. So I try and stay away from, um, yeah, try and stay away from what people say and do about me. <laughs> so I could just focus on myself and it <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. It's good to keep the true intentions to yourself. Eh? And, and like you said, stay true to yourself because it's so, it is really easy trying to meet others' expectations and you really, yeah. tr you truly, sorry, truly forget as to why you did it in the first place. Yeah. And, that's, uh, and especially now that social media is a thing and all that kind of stuff is you try so hard to fit a persona that you don't believe in, but others love. So that, yeah. that's really awesome what you said with sticking true to yourself. That's really good. Yeah, it's always when things get really hard, that's the easiest thing when you are sticking, yeah. being true to yourself and, and what you believe in. When things get really hard, you know what your go-to is and you know you feel good about it as well yeah. instead of trying to figure out what to do because you already know what your go-tos are. Yes, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, it was your, your debut for the Silver Ferns. It's been four years in the four years, have you have you been quite comfortable with where you're sitting in the four years? Or are you someone who's always, you know, like you said earlier, trying to push themselves, trying to excel, trying to improve and, and just better their game as who they are as a person on and off the court? I think in professional sport, we're always trying to improve and develop. And I think we had a chat with the 21s group um, just last week, actually. Yeah. And we talked about, or I brought up how I feel... Um, for me, it's like a staircase. Mm. Like you always, you tend to climb one step up and then you tend to plateau. And then you have to try and figure out whether it is a physical or a mental or emotional improvement that you need to do to step up to that next step. But you're always constantly going to be climbing that that step. So it's never going to be a baseline, never going to reach the top, but you're always constantly going to try and improve. And I think that's a great thing about the environment that we're in as well. We can challenge ourselves. And especially with the ferns too, um, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can be in one moment and out the next. Um, and that's the exciting part of it as well. Stressful, extremely stressful, but um, really exciting too, because you know, if you're not in it, you've got the opportunity to be in it. And when you are in it, you always have to work hard to stay in it. So it's a constant grind. It's not just physical. It's very much mental, but that's why we love it. That's why we do it. <laughs> what a wicked answer. That, that, uh, that staircase analogy, that's, that's perfect. That's such a good way to explain it. <laughs> such a good way to explain it. Um, when you do have your stressful days, now this can be a, an on-court or off-court kind of thing. When you have your stressful days and you, know, you, you might feel those days of you feel like you're lacking or letting yourself down or you, know, you, just, you just don't want to get stuff done. Mm. Right? How do you get stuff done? How do you keep that flame going? How do you get the simple things done? Gosh, that's a good one. Um, I think I go through stages where um, I try and be positive and upbeat most of the time, but everybody's got their down days. Everybody's got their chill days. And I think if I, if I can consistently try and be the best I can and positive and you know, tick away and doing my things that I need to do. The one or two days that I just absolutely cannot be bothered or I don't feel like it, I'm going to give myself that day. I'm yeah. going to enjoy that day, do whatever I need to do to get over it. And then tomorrow I'll be hard out again. I think it, the key thing is to realize you're going to have those days. Give yourself that day, you know, slouch around, do what you need to do, but being like, just ensure that the next day's that's you're going to get out of it <laughs> it's important to get out of it so um yeah i wouldn't say you don't have those days you definitely do but it's trying to get out of it as soon as possible yeah now little little six-year-old karen you know 
if you if you could think of a moment if you could think of a moment in your adulthood or or recent years where something's happened you've gone you know we've done it you know it was worth it it was worth those those painful days those days the sleepless nights and you know we did it my 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 childhood self would be proud of me right now yeah I think for me it would have been my selections into the silver ferns yeah. Um, because my move to New Zealand was when I was 18, but it was only seven years later that I actually made it into the ferns. So it was like a seven year grind trying to get there. And I had to juggle work and studies and trying to do my best I can with netball as well to make that work. I would be out in the morning at 5am. I won't get home by 9pm. So my first few years was really, really, really hard work. I learned a lot about myself. I developed my character quite a lot. The person I was when I moved here to the person that I am today is completely different. Yep. And I'm really grateful for that. So I've enjoyed that as hard as it was. I've learned a lot from it. So yeah, the day that I got into um, the ferns or my selections into the ferns was really like seven years of hard work has really paid off. So, yeah. Beautiful. Here's a fun question. All right. Here's a fun question. If you were to go to, I'll ask first, what's your, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Oh my gosh, that's so hard because it depends on the day. I'm like, I get, um, I get over stuff quite quickly. So it depends yeah, yeah, on the yeah. day. Um, but I do, I love a good burger and fries, um, which I, and I also like fried chicken. And I think I have to say my go-to one at the moment is Empire Chicken because they've both got the fried chicken and the burger. But now I've recently decided to go gluten-free. So that's a bit hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I need to find other options. Um, but yeah, that one used to be my go-to. <laughs> Gluten free, you realize all the nice stuff you can't have anymore. Oh right? my gosh. <laughs> the list gets chopped back like seventy percent. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself? No. <laughs> I was like, I'll get over it. <laughs> how long how long do you think it'll last? I've been doing it for a month as a challenge. Yep. Um, and I absolutely feel really good. I don't really realize how bad my gut was feeling until I've done it. So yep. I think the benefits that I've gained from it has caused me to think I'm going to have to do this like nonstop now. I'm I'm gluten free from now on, but I think I might cheat every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> like we said before, have have your days to yourself, you know, enjoy yourself yeah. and treat yourself. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> there will be some sneaky days in there. <laughs> so if you if I said okay, Karen, you know, here's a here's a plane ticket to anywhere. You know, I'll say apart from home, where else would you like to go? We get to travel quite a bit with netball, but we don't right, actually okay. ever get to experience the country as much on a tourist um, side of things. Yep. So one of two, I would love to go to Europe and do like just a trip of Europe, really. <laughs> it would be amazing, but I've always loved cold areas as yep, well. Yep. So I've always wanted to go to Switzerland. It's like, I know it's quite interesting. It's different, but yeah probably that one mm. that is a different one eh? The, it's that... very i like going against mainstream if yeah, yeah, yeah. Think something, i like to do the opposite yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. so you actually said it before how you know it's things can change so quickly you know you might want to do something in the year's time and in a couple of weeks time you might not do any more interests change or that that sort of things in this moment in time in the next three years right now and, and like we said before it, will ch it could change where would you like to see yourself in this in this moment in time? Um, goodness, three years from now. Well, three years from now will probably be leading into the first Com Games yep. again. Or oh, my will be my first Com Games. So I think for the next three years, apart from World Cup next year, I want to try and ensure that I keep my body healthy and fit. No injuries, no, no issues. No fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so that I can put my best foot forward to actually make it into a Com Games. I'm getting older, so as long as my body lasts and allows me to keep playing, I will try my best, but you never know. So I think I just want to try and live in the moment, and especially with the injury that's happened just now, I realize how important it is to actually value every moment you do have. Yep. But also want to start working on my life outside of netball. So I'm doing some studies, starting some studies again next year. So yep. hopefully ticking away at that kind of stuff too. So yeah. Hmm. What, what are you studying? 
Um, well, I've done some sports studies uh, a few years ago, and I've yeah. done a couple of business papers, which is not my thing. <laughs> I've realized. Um, so I've committed, which I'm really interested in, to nutrition starting next year. So that will come in very, very handy with all those fried chicken yes, yes. cravings. So um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Oh gosh, what, what are you going to say now when you go out to the to Empire Chicken? Uh, instead of bread buns, can I have lettuce instead? It's, <laughs> that's my nutrition okay. plan another place that does gluten-free options i've already started my research so don't you worry <laughs> actually while we're here that i want to say i'm curious now gluten-free fried chicken if that's even a thing -free fried um, chicken. no i've got a teammate that's gluten-free as well and she's already given me a couple of hints i can't remember off the top of my head what Ooh, that, that sounds nice gluten-free yeah. garage chicken there you go that's that stuff's have you have you had katsubi yes that's like oh i can't even explain it it's it's like a like teppanyaki you know the you know the restaurant where they oh yep yep yeah cook, it's like that it's like that sort of thing and karash chicken that's really nice okay that's See, all right they, you're they, safe they that's good options. i'm not i'm not limited i just need that's to good. broaden my horizons I to, <laughs> yeah. research <laughs> so have you have you because of when I was back in high school and I started the podcast, a lot of the girls who played netball in my school, you were their top two inspirations. So have you had, have you had a real moment where you've had, you know, a young boy or a young girl come up to you and you, you felt a bit, what's, what's the word, almost starstruck with yourself? Like, whoa, you know, I didn't realize that doing something I loved and enjoyed and, and just love yeah. playing the sport would have such an impact on people. Yeah, I think it's quite hard seeing myself um, in that position because I've done that so many times to older players yep. um, and to realize that I'm now in the in the, their shoes. I remember, um, I, can't, I think it was 2016 and I was still playing like Beckler level, which is under ANZ um, at like a national tournament. It wasn't anything, you know, like, professional um and there was this one girl that came over and mum had just come over to visit for the first time in New yeah. Zealand um and she asked for my autograph and I mean I was like playing nationals like um and mum took a photo of it and she's like you just wait in a few years time that girl's gonna be like you know I got a photo with her and I got her autograph back then and I laughed at my mum I was like no um, and so I think a couple of years into my ANZ um, seasons, uh, mum sent me that photo again. She's like, do you remember this day? And I, and I think I've actually had a photo again with that same girl, like being in an ANZ team. Um, yeah. And so for me, it's quite hard seeing myself like that. Yeah. But I think that's why it's so important for us. I think it's a, it's a mentality in net for us netballers that there are a lot of young boys and girls that look up to us and we need to be that standard um, and be a good influence on them as well, both on and off court. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I'm still coming to terms with that side of things. <laughs> that would be, that would be something hard, which is exactly how you said it. It is hard to see yourself in that, that sort of like eyesight because you, you are yourself, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you can't comprehend how, someone who you've never known or met in your life has come up to you and asked for your autograph you you probably would have been like are you sure are yeah you sure? are you sure yeah, you want well, my autograph yeah no, that was pretty much was like are you sure you want mine you know who I, am? <laughs> I think i still do it to this day i went home and visited um south africa when i was in my moon boot just had yep. my story um and I went to a tournament to watch my sister play um just like a casual tournament and I didn't think anything of it I was like I'll just be in the background I'll just hide like I don't really think anybody um and it was quite <laughs> I was quite shocked at how many people approached me and I felt quite like I I've known you for years like I grew up with you like this is really weird yeah 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 <laughs> And I, that's exactly my response. Are you sure? Like, <laughs> what this? Um, so yeah, <laughs> it was a bit of a shock to me. <laughs> so what what are your plans for the for the festive season? You're going to go back home. You're going to stay over here. What, what's the plan for that? Yeah. Well, originally we've got. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed. My plan is to. We've got trials. Um. In December for yep. a tour that's going to Jan in January to South Africa. Yep. 
so fingers crossed that was my plan to then try and go home for Christmas as well um flight price they're a bit expensive and I left it to the last minute so I've decided to stay in New Zealand um I'm winging it to be honest I've got an uncle and an aunt that lives in Wellington so I might go there for Christmas and yeah maybe spend a few days up in Tauranga to get catch some sun but very much winging it <laughs> love that you got that, that's that's the that's the lifestyle you gotta live is just go with the flow exactly the flow. i'm pretty relaxed like that <laughs> okay so now what i want to do is i want to hand it over to you now so if there's anything how, how should i with this if there's if there's something you feel needs to be said something you feel needs to be put out there something you might want to say for your future self to look back on for the, the young boy or, or girl who's listening in and, and looks up to you or wants to be like you, what would you, what would you have to put out there? Um, gosh, that's, a, <laughs> um, I think for me, um, I'm always big on like opportunities and you having to grab the opportunities that's given to you. Like I would not be where I am today. And I think anybody, it doesn't have to be in just a sporting environment, wherever you are in your life, we always get presented with opportunities. And if you don't, you can always create your own opportunities um, and just to use them. Cause even though things don't work out the way you thought or in the way that opportunity was given, it always leads you on a different path. I've met amazing people um, and I've opened so many doors by just taking the opportunities that I've been given, even though I was so scared to do them, just to have that courage. And then along that way to just, like I've said before, staying true to yourself, mm. but to be able to be that, you need to know yourself really well. So, um, and it takes a while, like it takes a while to get to that point. It's taken me a while to know what, my beliefs and values are that I'm 100% set on so that that would sort of drive me throughout my life and achieving my goals as well so I would say hard work using the opportunities that's given to you and just be true to yourself love that that that's awesome thank you for that <laughs> thank you very much for coming on the podcast today Karen I really appreciate it uh yeah it was absolutely amazing chat and what you said there is I can't preach it enough just staying true to yourself it's, it's one of the basics that so many of us sometimes just overlook. You know, we get caught, so caught up with life and, and the outside world stresses that we forget to just look after ourselves and, and remain true to ourselves. So that was absolutely wonderful. So thank you for that. No, thanks for having me. Thanks for the great chat. <laughs> yeah. Now to you, I love you very much. And as I always say, there's no silly question in the world. Always ask questions to better yourself. And as Karen said, take the opportunities that are given to you. And if you don't get it, given any opportunities create them for yourself until next week or actually until next year this is the last episode for this year until next year remember to do what you know is right do what makes you happy and do what you need to do for yourself have an amazing christmas have a safe new year i'll talk to you new year, uh, next year see you later Love is lost, but